Welcome to KeyMart's Key Build for Steel demonstration. With the Key Build software, you are able to create a 3D model of a structure. With this 3D model, you can design roof, wall, and floor framing. With the 3D model, you are able to make an accurate depiction of your structure, including roof trusses, wall panels, and floor systems. And with the key build software, you are able to generate all the gravity loads and transfer those loads from the roof, through the walls, into the floors, down to the foundation. So if we create a new job in key build, we set up some defaults, such as our roof pitch, wall height, and wall width. And of course, we can support metric units and put in our loading information for floor joists, as well as walls, and of course, the roof loads. We can set up our design products, which are the horizontal framing members, such as you see here. And you can just select that from a database of steel sections by selecting the shape, depth, gauge. Once you have your database of materials set up, you can start your 3D model by setting up levels. So here I'll set up a level for my foundation, give it a top of plate height, and then I'll name the level. Once I've set up that level, I can start my 3D model. I'll enter into my Entity Input Macro where I'll set my defaults for my walls and start drawing my walls. We do our wall input by using the 10 key number pad by inputting distance and direction. So here I'll just put in an up, down, left or right distance or direction and then the distance associated with it. We can also trace through a DXF shadow job if that works as well. So where I've put in my foundation walls, and now I can select my bearings and select some drop beams to hold up my floor system. So I'll select a beam for a floor system and draw a couple of beams across my foundation walls. Once I have my beams in, I can put in my opening so I'll select my opening and I'll put in an opening for the stairwell down into the basement. The program recognizes that we need support and so I'll put girders as a support around my opening. Then I can use my trim command to extend those girders to their bearing points. Once I have the girders in place, I can draw in my floor framing area. I'll select my areas and draw around the perimeter where I'd like to place my area. Once I have this perimeter in place, the program will prompt me to select what type of area. I'll select a floor with engineer joists, 24 inches on center, and put in a 12 inch depth. I have no product selected this time as I'll be engineering to see what size joists will work. As you can see here in the 3D model, once I've gone through and engineered those joists, we'll place in the rim. I'll add another level for my wall framing. I'll pick this on level 15. We have 25 levels available. Put in my floor depth to calculate my new top of plate height. And then I'll name this level first floor walls. I'll shadow my foundation level and trace my walls on top of that. So I'll select my bearings and draw in my walls. Select the properties for my walls, continuous, and then I'll just trace that around the perimeter. As you can see here, as I input the walls, it automatically frames those walls with my stud and track to place in that framing. So I'll draw in my garage walls and then I'll place in a couple of interior walls. And then once those walls are in, of course, we can select if they're load-bearing or non-load-bearing interior or exterior walls. Now I'll put in my openings. I'll select the component type, door or window, place that in the wall, and I use my arrow keys to move that opening. I can move them in feet, inches, or sixteenth increments, and I can measure the opening from the left or right or the center. Once I place the opening in, I can place that same opening in other walls, or I could change that size to different component sizes. So I'll throw in a couple of windows around the exterior, 
Then I'll change over to a door, put in a standard door size, place in a couple of doors front and back, and then put in some smaller interior doors. Place those in the wall. I can move my mouse or my arrow keys to place those doors where they need to be. Then I can change that over and I'll put in a 16 foot garage door. Now that I have my openings, I'll take a look at the 3D model. Here in the 3D model you see the openings have been placed and framed according to my presets. Now that I have my wall and floor system in, I can put in any type of ceiling framing. So I'll put in a ceiling plane for a vaulted ceiling with a 312 slope. And I'll put another ceiling plane at the other end of the room that I want the vaulted ceiling. Then I can cut in those ceiling planes to define the perimeter of that vaulted ceiling. And I'll cut in the other end. Close that off. Then if we look at the 3D wire model, you'll see here I've got that vaulted ceiling. Turn off the lower level. And then we can extrude our bearings, which allows us to extrude the walls up to those ceiling planes, which will rake those walls, automatically framing them right up to the ceiling plane. Now that I have my walls and ceiling planes in, I can populate my model with my roof planes. So I'll select roof planes with a 612 slope and a 10 inch heel height. Put roof planes all around my model and delete out a couple for gable ends. To extend my roof planes, I just select on it and in a clockwise manner go around and select the cutting of those planes to define the geometry of my roof. So I just go around and select each roof plane and click on the adjacent plane cutting lines to define that geometry. This gives the user a lot of control over creating a 3D model of that roof system. Once I have that roof system in, I can lay in my roof trusses. First I'll need to place in my overhangs. I'll select my overhangs, one foot overhang, come around the perimeter by selecting the endpoints. So I'll just draw in my overhangs through my gable and hip ends. Then once we have those final roof overhangs in, I'll place in my roof trusses. So I need a truss girder for a change of direction here down the center of the house. So I'll come in and draw in a bearing and I'll select a truss girder for a roof system and then I can place in my areas. I'll just diagonally draw across the uh, area that I want the roof framing with trusses, 24 inches on center, and it just populates that area with roof trusses. These are back-to-back -back C trusses and a width of three and a quarter inches. So I'll populate these last two areas with roof trusses. And then from there, I'll be able to now define a couple of the hip ends. So I'll select my hip end, draw in my hip end line, select my hip end type and the planes, and that will automatically draw in my hip end framing with my girder, my corner jacks, and my jacks. Now I need a couple of gables, and I'll draw in a couple of end gables. I'll select a non-structural gable, and I have a couple of gable ends to just place those in. Right here, and then one more. So there we have our placement of our trusses. And if we look at the 3D model, we'll see here that we have our 3D model completed with a foundation, walls, and roof geometry with trusses. Take a look at the wall framing, and then go inside the 3D model to see how it's come together. And that is creating a 3D model. We'll save it real quick. And then we're going to go over to our structure program to do the gravity load analysis.
So here I'll select my building code, IBC IRC, my deflection criteria, and we'll go through the process of first generating the loads on the roof, down through the trusses, and then onto the walls to select our horizontal framing members. So we'll select our headers, turn on all of our headers, and look at our available products, number of plies that work, and then it automatically throws those in and we can generate a calc sheet showing the loads on that header. So here we have our reactions as well as our load case reactions and our allowable stress design based on the material the program has selected for that header. Once we've placed those members in as headers they'll show up as we frame and we can go down to the floor system and do the same thing. Through the foundation level we'll generate and transfer the loads from the roof down to the foundation and then we will analyze those floor framing areas. Here the program is going to break up the floor system into areas of like spans and loads. We can then select all of those areas, bring up our material list of C-section joists. It'll tell us what the spacing works based on those spans and loads. And just like we did with the headers, we can produce a calc sheet showing the engineering on that floor joist, what the reactions are at each of the bearing points, as well as our load case reactions, and then our allowable stress design. Once we've placed those in, we can go to our girders, go through the same process of sizing our girders, selecting the product we would like and number of plies, and place those in. And then we can place those products and produce our plot for our floor system. This plot now has a label for each of our floor joists and blocking and rim. We can go through and add dimensions to our floor system as well as any other notes or details. And it also produces a full material cut list with each label associated product and length. Once we go back out to our wall framing, we can look at our wall framing. We can modify such things as the corner lapping, how those are being framed, as well as we can split walls based on the length that we would like our wall panels. It automatically splits those or we can manipulate the length or rejoin them. We can also label our wall panels based on the system. I'll give this exterior 101 and just click on the walls and it advances to those numbers. Take a look at the individual wall panel. shows us an elevation view. We can modify sticks, add sticks, change our wall framing, and of course we can produce shop drawings. So we'll generate an elevation view shop drawing showing a label for each of our sticks as well as its automatically dimensioned and our cut list. From there, we can take a look at our trusses, our C-section trusses as our loading information. Take a 3D look of our C-section back-to-back truss. And then we can take a look of our loads. So here's all the load cases on this truss. And we can then take a look at the reactions at each of the bearing points, as well as the deflection. Go through the different load cases and it will actually show us the amount of deflection along those points and look at the CSI, which is the Combined Stress Index. We can take a look at our output, such as our cutting list, shows the dimension of the truss, as well as each member, the material to be cut for cords and webs, and their lengths. Then it gives us a joint detail, showing us the screw count for the connections at each joint. Now if we take a look at our engineering sheet for the truss, it shows us our CSI summary as well as our material and load summary. So for more information about Keymark's KeyBuild software or for an online demo, please contact us and we will give you one of those demonstrations. Thank you.